YouTube, what's going on? Kevin the Tech Ninja, and today we're taking a look at the Galaxy S10e. I've used this phone for almost a month now, so I'm ready to give my final thoughts and opinions of this phone. Although I'm not comparing this phone directly to the S10 or the iPhone XR, I will be making reference to those other phones too in this video, but I'm gonna to try to keep it specifically on the XE. Let's start with some of the basics. This is Samsung's budget-friendly S10 option, and it starts at $750. And for that $750, you get yourself a flagship phone with most of the bells and whistles that the $1,000 premium version has, the S10. Samsung also gives us some pretty aggressive color options, which I think overall looks great. In the hand, I think it feels very premium, although there was some corners that had to be cut to make it land at this price point. We gotta start off with the screen. It's 5.8 inches and it's 1080p resolution. Yeah, it's not the highest resolution screen around, but for day-to-day -day usage, it's nearly indistinguishable from the S10. Fun fact, the S10 and S10 Plus actually ships at 1080p resolution, and not many people actually go ahead and change it to the higher resolution, so you may be experiencing the same resolution in screens even if you pay for the more premium version. It shares that same dynamic AMOLED technology for the screens. Even if you don't know what that means, just know you're getting a great screen made by Samsung. It's super bright and the colors really jump out at you. Let's go to the side of the phone. And there you have your volume rockers and on the bottom you'll find a USB-C port, a bottom firing speaker, and also the headphone jack. On the other side you'll find the fingerprint scanner that doubles as a power button. This fingerprint scanner is super fast. It's a literal tap and you're in the phone. It's a lot faster than the underscreen fingerprint scanner, although it's not as sexy as that, but it's way more practical. The back is still slippery and still gets smudges, so dbrand wants to help you out with that, giving you the option to get one of their skins. You can pick from a variety of colors and textures like this swarm one. I think it's a pretty cool looking design and it gives you some much needed texture. Hit the link down below to dbrand your device. On the back, we do have a dual camera setup. It's 12 megapixels on the main camera and it has a variable aperture and focal length is 26 millimeters, which on paper is a decent spec camera. But you also have a 16 megapixel wide angle lens. This has a focal length of 12 millimeters. The wide angle lens lends itself to some very interesting perspectives and it works wonderfully outside for landscapes, buildings, or taking a group shot. Although the camera to me is not perfect in every situation, as the software seems to get in the way, as you see with the S10 Plus and the standard S10. There's still some filtering going on and some of this over-processing, and images appear to be too bright compared to what the actual scene looks like. And to compensate for low light, it does add a little bit of yellow to the scene. And it's a big problem I've had with Samsung cameras in the past, and it's still there. It's not a big deal for most users, and most people may not even see it, but for someone who loves taking photos and has other phones to compare to, I personally think it's a disappointment. I think this camera shines the best when it's outside and you actually have some good lighting. That filtering that I discussed before that adds that yellow tinge to it, well, outside, I think it comes out really good and you get some of the best looking photos that you can find on any phone. The HDR in the sky looks great and all the details and the textures are there. I really dig the camera outside, and especially you have the flexibility with the wide angle lens making all perspectives look really cool. The front facing camera for me is hit or miss. Sometimes I get a great shot like this, and other times it seems to miss the mark. Also when beauty mode is off, I still find the image over processed. It's just not for me at all, which is okay. I, I don't take many selfies, but I'm a bit disappointed by it. I guess one of the highlights for me is that the selfie camera does have a wide angle mode too. So this allows you to get multiple people in one shot. Really great for group photos. The video mode for me has had major updates compared to last year's version and I think in most circumstances it's great. There is a super smooth video mode which knocks out majority of the shakes and jitters that you get from walking and shooting video. I think it's fantastically done and also the onboard microphones are really good. It picks up ambient sounds and voices very good. 
I do find in low light, once again, still running into your autofocusing issues and yellow tinges with a lot of light bleed. Overall, the camera isn't a big improvement over the Note 9, but if you're looking at the S8 or the S9, I do think you will see an improvement. In nice lighting, I think this camera does produce great images and videos, but it may not be the most color accurate if that's what you're looking for. Performance is what you'd expect from any phone running the Snapdragon 855, which is the same processor found in the more premium version of the phone. Snapdragon's latest chip is just fast. I don't have a long drawn out speech to tell you about going between apps and all that stuff. It's just a very fast phone. One of the fastest Android phones you're gonna find, even with the software skin on top, which is Samsung One UI. I think Samsung One UI is just good software. It's zippy, it's fast, and, and it just doesn't get in the way as you've seen with previous software from Samsung. Love it or hate, some people don't like the rounded icons and rounded buttons, but to me, it really doesn't bother me at all. I think it's fine. It's one of those love it or hate it type of things, and you know, I think after a while, you get used to it. And with it being Android, you obviously have customization options, so you can customize things, you can change icons, and do all those things right on this phone, and you can even install a different launcher. So if you'd rather have a launcher that's more Google-like, you can install a stock launcher, you can install a Nova launcher, you have a lot of different options with Android, so if you don't like something on this phone, you can most definitely change it. Inside the phone, there is a 3100 milliamp battery, and I found the battery life to be decent. It's on par with the standard S10, even though the battery is smaller. It does make it through the whole day. However, if you're gonna hang out all night, you may need to top it off, but it does have quick charging, so you're getting your battery back up to where it needs to be. Shouldn't be an issue at all. It does have the reverse power share that people like to talk about so much where you place a, another device on the back of it and it charges. Um, it's a cool feature, nothing that I will be using quite often, but the phone does have that too. Overall, for $750, this is a compelling package, and I may even make the argument that dollar for dollar, this is the best Android phone available today. But what are some things you're giving up from the premium version? You're giving up the telephoto lens, you're giving up a bigger battery, you're giving up a higher resolution screen, but an asterisk next to that is that the phone ship with 1080p resolution anyways. And also the in-body fingerprint scanner. But I personally think the side button is more efficient and more accurate. But are those compromises worth $250 to you? No, not to me. And so what I mean by that is that the Galaxy S10e has my stamp of approval as one of the best Android phones you can buy. And I would even make the argument that I would take it over the standard S10, especially when you factor in the price. What do you think? Let me know down below. I'm Kevin the Tech Ninja. Have yourself a great day. Holla at your boy later. Peace.